Hello everybody and welcome to the channel. It's Polyester here and today was Thursday so there's a dev stream. So this is kind of like a part two because the the other uh, part was just so significant that I wanted to give it its own video by itself for this year three plan for Dead by Daylight and um, that was just such a significant announcement and refreshing change of the narrative and direction for the game that I gave it its own video. So now we're going to talk about the PTB results. And if you took part in the PTB, the survey is still open. Um, I believe you can um, partake in the survey until tomorrow. So I'll have the link in the description here for you to click it and talk about the PTB. So Thomas sat in with Not Queen, and he talked about the results of the PTB and what they learned from it and where they're going with that. Again, the PTB is the public test bill that was available for PC only to test out this emblem system, which is going to be the new scoring system for how we pip. We're still going to earn blood points in the game. I don't know if I've ever made that entirely clear. Blood points are staying. We're always going to have blood points to buy things for our characters. But the way we rank in pip is going to be converted over to this emblem system. So now we're going to talk about that. So we'll just go through some of the slides here and what was revealed in the PTB. I was going to do a real breakdown of all the scores and how you score in these different categories because there's somebody on Reddit, I think their name is Jesterett. Um, I'll have a link to the Reddit thread in the description. They pulled apart all of the values in the game to figure out how you actually score these different emblems in the game, different qualities of emblem, and what's required to do that. And this is the second time I considered breaking down all of that data. But now that they're going to change it again, it just doesn't really seem like it makes a lot of sense to show you how you would have scored in the in the past versions, you know. So if they're going to change it again, then it just doesn't really make a lot of sense to show you that data. But there will be a link in the description if you're curious because some of it is going to stay the same. It isn't going to get tweaked that much but you can see like how many points you're going to get for a decisive strike from escaping a killer's grasp and how many generators you need to do to get certain qualities of lightbringer and that if you want to really get in depth into all those stats you can look at that but i'm i decided that i'm not going to show you that so we'll just go into the slides here so what did we learn in this ptb survivors are in a way better place because from the last survey um it was hard to score as survivor and easy to score as killer. Not sure that it got any harder for killer. But if you, so if you, some survivor emblems like benevolent still need adjustment. There was things like for me to get benevolent, if we went up against a killer that wasn't very good, it was hard for me to get any benevolent because they couldn't hit anybody. So we weren't getting any healing or unhooking points. So that category was a little weird for me. And you see in this slide here that they're showing here points per player per match for Survivor. And they said they want this to be a, a bell curve from the 1 to 16. And right now it's skewed to the left. If you add it up, I think there's something like 54% of Survivors got seven, 7 emblems or fewer. And that's not a pip. So you need 5 emblems to safety pip you need eight to pip and you need 13 to double pip so if you're looking at the 13 through 16 you can see that it's like less than two percent that we're able to double pip in this system they want to get it more of a bell curve where it's even a you know hill in the middle and the the other two sides are symmetrical so it needs some tweaking and then off here on the right, we have the survivor emblem quality, and it shows you, you know, what quality of emblem people got in the certain categories. They did say that the unbroken is broken, so we can ignore that data because it isn't correct. The evader, I guess, is <coughs> the one that is where they want it the most. The, it's like bell curvy, right? So that looks right to them. Lightbringer needs adjustment. Benevolent needs adjustment. Like, look at how many people are getting none in the in the benevolent. And it's so skewed to the left-hand side of that one. And then the unbroken is not correct either. So they're still going to work on this. They realize that there's still some flaws in it. But they aren't going to have a third PTB. 
we're just going to, they're going to tweak it and then they're going to roll it out and they're just going to continuously adjust it as they bring in the data and see where things are at. So let's see, next slide here. All right, now, what did we learn in the PTB? The killer snowball effect is still too important. We want to manage more disparity between the different emblems quality. So they said that the emblems are kind of tied together for the killer and the way that you score. Like if you're going to get a good score for devout, you're almost automatically going to get a score, good score for malicious because you need to be able to score in one category. They're tied hand in hand. They go hand in hand. So if you're going to do well in one category, you're going to do well in the other. And so then if you're looking statistically, remember I said you need 13 <laughs> emblems to double pip, right? So what are we looking at here? That's, uh, let's say, 17%, 13%. That's 30, 40, 46 percent of killers are double pipping. What? I don't know. And then on the right here, you can see this the survive uh, the the killers quality of emblems. And you see, there's a lot of iridescent. Like 50 percent of people were getting iridescent gatekeeper, and over 50 percent were getting chaser. So. They got iridescent the majority of the time in all four of these categories, which means that it's easy for the killers to score. So that's something they're probably going to look at changing. Okay, this is due to several factors. Killer emblems have way more overlap than survivor ones. Killer emblems balancing follow followed similar difficulty steps for all of them. So that's what they're talking about, the overlap, is that if you're going to do well in one category, you're going to do well in the other. So they're lending they're going hand in hand if you're knocking the person down you're going to get the the chaser and then if you're hanging them up so you're getting points right in both categories at once so let's see next slide here a few important points were not clearly communicated evader stealth points are purely based on distance not on the terror radius so um, if there were killers that had smaller terror radiuses like Myers, it was your evader score was just based on your actual distance to the killer, not whether or not you were in heartbeat when you were hiding from them. That's what they wanted to clear up about that. Vader stealth points have not been nerfed drastically. They have mostly been reduced when the killer is in a, ch in a chase to avoid survivors following the killer. Aha! So they don't want you following the killer and getting that proximity and going, I'm sneaky, he doesn't see me because I'm behind because he's chasing somebody else and scoring up those points. Chaser does not make you lose your points if the chase extends. The beginning of the chase is simply more rewarding. Right, so chaser is you get more points the sooner you get a whack on them as the killer. We're not on purpose making it easier to pip for killers than survivors. The curves of the points one should be a bell curve for both. So as I said, this is something that they're tweaking. They're trying to get it in. I don't think there was a lot of participation in the PTV2. If I'm being completely honest, we had a hard time getting games. And when I was on Twitch stream and playing with um, Survive with Friends, the people who were sitting odd man out most often wound up becoming our killer. Like I would say half of the time, the person odd man out, the fifth person, would wind up being our killer it was pretty unusual there was not a lot of people playing the ptb i'm quite certain that they got less data from this than they did the first time probably because when people looked at the patch notes they saw that it wasn't that different and they had seen it the first time and they would rather have just earned points instead of playing for no points and data if they felt like they had a pretty good grasp on it already it wasn't worth their time so that was kind of disappointing but it is what it is what do we learn in the in the PTB? Evader will only grant half the points granted if the survivor does not escape. Okay, so one of the things they said is that the evader, the change that they made where you're banking points every 15 seconds that you're in a chase was encouraging pallet looping and extended chases and even to the point of not even trying to escape just to bank those points. So now they want to change it so that you're going to only get half the points if you don't escape from the killer when you're in that chase. Chaser will be readjusted based on the average length of the chase. And we'll have to look at specific killers in specific situations. Nurse for Chaser to assess if changes 
and the emblems need to be brought for those characters. So I guess if Nurse is really good at blanking, hello, I'm here, whack, I win that chase because it's like an, an instant smack. So maybe Nurse was really easy for her to get chaser points. I mean, it was really easy for every killer to get chaser points from what I see. In short, survivors in a way better place, but still need a few adjustments. Killers are still too easy and will be readjusted mostly through balancing. Our, object our objectives for both roles is to reach a bell curve. Chaser and evader mechanics will be readjusted to make extended pallet looping less viable. Yeah, because that was the thing. As they said, if you're just pallet looping, you're like, I'm getting points. This is an ongoing process and will be monitored and readjusted over time. So as I said, they're not going to do a PTB3. I think probably for the next rank reset, this will be inserted. And um, they're just going to get the data from everybody and adjust it as we go. And this emblem system will go live. I don't think they'll wait much longer than that. So that is indeed all I have for you today. I know it's weird for you to see two news videos from me today, but I thought it was important to separate this uh, year three plan video from the PTB results just because this was such a significant announcement. They said it was going to be a significant announcement, and uh, I can't say that they didn't hit the target on that one. So PTB uh, is done. Emblem system was what was tested in it. Emblem system is going to be coming to console and PC eventually. And we're going to have to all work together to uh, give them more data and have them tweak it along the way so that they can get those bell curves adjusted and allow people to play the styles that they want to play and still pip and rank up. So thanks for watching as always, everybody. Thanks for the 10K subs, too. Stuff's been a little crazy, so I didn't get to make a proper 10K thank you video. But thanks to all of you. Couldn't do this without you, obviously. I appreciate all the eyes on this channel and um, how supportive you all are. And uh, just the way you treat me, it, it's, uh, it's humbling. So thanks to all of you for that. And we got a community tab today so it's like a little facebook for the channel where i can put out pictures and polls and things and that's pretty cool so thanks to all of you for that and uh we'll see you next time have a great day bye, -bye.